All right, so this is a little teaser for the next video I'm going to put out. And for my advanced programming students, this is sort of uh, going to serve as your requirements um, document for this next assignment, this next project we're going to work on. Um, this is this is going to be a little bit of a stretch. Um, it's definitely an intermediate kind of uh, kind of a project. Uh, when I was building this, I even ran into you know some issues um, that stumped me for a little while until I, I finally worked through them and figured them out. So I don't expect this to be uh, a walk in the park for anybody. But uh, in just a few days, I will uh, I'll put out a step by step um, sort of how I how I went about this, how I built this um, crossword puzzle application. Um, but for now, I just want to kind of show you guys um, sort of how it works and what's going on so that uh, if you want to try and tackle it before I put out the video um, for the tutorial or for how to do this step by step, you can um, you can take a crack at it. So um, what we have is basically two separate win forms. Um, uh, and I think, um, you know, we'll get into some more about how, how to actually do that. Um, when we start working in the, the tutorial, but basically the file menu looks like open puzzle where we can open up a file um, that basically describes um, what this looks like and what the clues are for the crossword puzzle. It's just a, simply a text file that gives, uh, you know, X, Y coordinates, um, the direction, you know, either down or across, um, you know, what number to show, you know, in the corner of the beginning of the word, the word itself, and then the clue. Um, and so what's going on here is when the application launches, it's reading in that file and then it's it's basically um, formatting this data grid view that I've added here um, to show uh, my crossword puzzle. In this second form over here, um, what we have are the actual clues. Um, and so, uh, you know, obviously one down would correspond to one down right here. Um, the let blank rule, if you're a Lenny Kravitz fan, um, love is the answer, right? Um, you'll notice that when I type a uh, correct letter, it turns green. Um, if I type a bad letter, I'll show you here in a second, um, not opened would be closed, right? So if I type C here, C is good. But if I typed A instead of O, you'll notice it turns red, basically saying that this is not the correct value. Um, so if I continue typing, uh, you know, I get, I get the right answer. Um, what else do I want you guys to know about this? I... I guess that's probably it. Um, if, if we want to, I basically have two separate um, um, puzzles built. Again, they're just text files. Um, so, you know, basically uh, you want to have give the user the ability to open a, a puzzle. Uh, this is just a text file with the PZL as, as the file extension, but you want to give the user the ability to open uh, a puzzle file. Um, this one looks a little bit different, right? It just has two instead of the five or six or however many I had in the last one. But when uh, you open a puzzle, it should basically reset the board and show the appropriate um, cues or clues, I'm sorry, and then basically structure the board um, the way that it, that, uh, it looks now, right? Um, in terms of the, the really difficult things that I ran into, uh, I'm still running into, right? Uh, what I want to have happen, because um, this isn't completely done on my end, is when you select, select a cell, um, I want to highlight it, right, like these do. But uh, what I had to do to get these little numbers to appear in the background of the cell was actually a kind of heavy lifting. And uh, it took me a little while to figure out. And, and right now I'm clicking on this. Um, you'll see that I haven't been able to <laughs> recapture that uh, highlight there when I select the cell. You can still type into it, um, but uh, you know it doesn't, uh, it doesn't highlight like I want it to. So you can't really tell that you have the cell selected until you start typing. Um, but uh, yeah, so so getting that to work, I'm still going to figure that out, and hopefully I'll have that straight by the time I make the video. Um, but uh, getting these little uh, these little numbers to show up in the background here uh, basically required uh, doing some graphics work um, and and doing paints uh, or, or overriding some paint methods so that um, we could show these. And and uh, it was actually uh, complicated. I ended up pulling information from a bunch of different sites or examples from a bunch of different sites. Um, you know, forums, et cetera, before I actually got it working. It was kind of an amalgam of, of a bunch of different things. But uh, I'll show you guys exactly how I do all that, um, you know, when I, when I do the video. But I just wanted to let this serve as sort of an idea of what we're going for. Um, you know, I don't, it doesn't have to be exactly like this. Um, you know, whenever I build this, it'll look very similar uh, for the video. But if you guys want to take a crack at it before I put the video out, that'd probably be a good idea. I stretch you a little bit. You know, you'll run into some problems and you'll spend some time in Google trying to figure out how to fix them. So uh, stand by for uh, a video and um, good luck getting started on your own. Take care.